Oh, Sheila Douglas here. Now, those of you who um, are used to seeing me on Create and Craft with my usual messy type of crafting may be quite surprised to see that here I am with something that would, you would expect to be quite clean and quite confined and a much more civilised way of colouring in with Spectrum Noirs. But I have um, kind of applied my messy kind of twist on this. We've, I've gone for something a little bit different technique wise and this is a card that I've created using that technique that I want to share with you. It's you're colouring onto acetate and using the colours so that they look more like a, a kind of a watercolour effect. Mm -hmm. Look, well, quite different actually to, the, to what you would normally get when you just colour them with your Nina, onto your Nina card. So this is just an example of something you could make with, with this the technique. And they're using my stamps. The, scene, the, the tree here is from the Country Lane silhouette stamps and the, the branch here is from the In the Garden. And this is from one of my wording sets. Um, only word set. So what we'll do is that if you know, pen, pens and things I'm using, I might mention the colours, the numbers quickly, but I will make sure there's some written reference so that if you if you want to look up anything I've used, you're going to be able to find that. So let's get cracking then. Let's um, get started on this uh, card. So we're ready to go. Now what you won't be able to see very clearly is that um, you will see my advanced craft sheet. And you'll see a piece of Nina card here, but you may not be able to pick up this piece of acetate that we're going to work on. It's really important that this is heat resistant acetate. Ordinary acetate will end up a horrible shriveled mess if you use that. You'll soon find out if you've got the wrong stuff. So heat resistant acetate. Before I do any stamping on this, this is essential, I use, because I'm going to emboss, an anti-static pad. Now this is a crafter's companion one and I'm just going ahead and I'm really, I'm pouncing over the whole of this background here uh, because I want a good thick covering of the powder that's in here on that surface. Don't worry if you've got too much on, the ink that we use will, will get through that powder. We're going to use a Versamark. Now another thing I've just remembered, I do need to pop this cutting mat underneath this because this table I'm stamping on will give. If you've got one of these um, plasticky type tables and your stamping's not great, put a glass craft mat on or get a piece of um, like an MDF cut uh, off cut because you need a firm surface. Right now let's start with this large tree. This is the tree. I have it already mounted onto my extra large rocker block so what you're going to need if, you, if you've got my stamps, my stamp range because I do tend to make my images quite large. I like them to be for not just cards but wall art, also scrapbooking so they're rather scaled up in size. Um, already stuck it with my stick and spray and um, we're good to go. So I'm going to take some Versamark and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to ink up this image. Now Versamark is the stickiest, gloopiest ink I know. And the thing is, is if you're bad like me and you haven't cleaned it off from the last time, you'll end up with something that's, that's like toffee or super glue on your stamp. So it's the one thing I would clean up if you can. Um, and that's not very usual to hear me say that. So, oh by the way, I'm starting off with a larger area than I'm going to end up. Always easier for composition, for straightening lines. And we can get rid of a multitude of sins that way. So let's go ahead and just stamp that tree. When I'm stamping these large stamps with rock, my rocker blocks, I move my hands to the centre, by the way, and give it a little bit of a pressure. Because because they're larger, if you hold them at the edge, you sometimes might not get the middle of the image stamped. So that's great. The tree's on there. I can see it. You might not. It's all good. I have some black embossing powder. I've got this, um, just a spoon here, that I'm just going to spoon onto the acetate. And then tap off the excess. Okay, now what I want is that embossing powder sticking to the image but I don't want little meteorites all over the place because once they're heated they'll not come off so by meteorites I mean little bits of powder now I'm going to go ahead and heat this and wait till your heat gun heats up before you start and then you're going to get a nice even temperature and a good even melt so start at one end not too close it is acetate after all and you can warp it if you're, if you're really determined to do that so once it's melted, you'll find it will melt quite quickly on plastic. Move on. Okay, now that looks pretty much done to me. You'll see, really easy to see if you've missed any bits. Now I'm going to go ahead and stamp the branch next, but I'm just going to do that off camera. But what I want to mention is, if you've got any little bits that are missing like this, 
don't worry there's ways to fix this a great way to fix it is if you get a like a water based pen or a slow drying ink pen you can get Versamark pens you can colour it in like this I like this one because it's black so I can see where I've gone like da, 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 a little bit there you'll find where there's a large expanse of rubber sometimes it can miss a little bit it's nothing to do with your stamping it's just the way it is and then you can pop on a bit of embossing powder melt it No one would know. We will say nothing. It's just between you and me. So I'm going to stamp the other branch here, do the exactly the same thing, come back and we'll do some colouring. Now I said I was going to come back with some colouring, but I've just remembered something, not quite yet. If you notice here, I have a, a leafy branch. My tree doesn't have any leaves on it. Now this could be an evergreen, but just in case people are thinking, how's that going on there? Mixed seasons, what's going on in Douglas World? I'll show you how we can make that look like it's a leafy tree. Um, when I draw trees, I tend to draw them without leaves because you can always add them. So, same black pen, I'm just going to go ahead and just dot some dots like this. Not leaves, I'm not trying to draw leaves. Don't get hung up on trying to draw leaves, you'll be there forever. You don't need to, it's just an impressionistic um, stylization of something that's growing on these branches. Now, before this ink dries, I want to go ahead and put a little bit more black and flat embossing powder on. To show you how it's working. Oh, you see, look, CSI. I'll get rid of them. And then we'll dry this, and you'll see how it starts to look like we've got some blossom or leaves going on there. There you go. So I'm going to do a little bit more of that, then we'll do some colouring. 